Hey guys, so now that you have a good idea of how momentum works, we're going to talk about conservation of momentum, which is one of the key aspects of momentum. And the classic example is when you have two objects colliding. Whenever two objects colliding, we say that momentum of the entire system is conserved. Let's check it out. So, as I said, a key aspect of momentum is that when you have two or more objects interacting, it could be a collision or some other form of two object interaction, the momentum of the system is conserved. Now remember, a system is just a group of objects, it's a collection of objects. The total momentum of a system is the sum of the individual momenta. Momenta is just the plural for momentum, it's not momentums, it's funny, but that's what it is. Um, so if I, if I have two objects, the momentum of the system, of the collection of the objects is just the momentum of one plus the momentum of the other. So momentum of a system is the sum of the individual momenta. And if you have two objects, for two objects, you would have something like P1 plus P2. Now remember, P equals MV. So we're going to take this one step further. And instead of P, I'm going to write MV. So it's going to look like this, M1 V1 plus M2 V2. And if you've gone to class and your professors talked about momentum already, you will at the very least remember that he wrote this a lot, right? So we're going to be seeing a lot of M1 V1, M2 V2. All right, let's do a very quick example here. I have two objects, A and B. Uh, they're moving towards each other. It says that A moves to the right. If two objects are moving towards each other, the one that's moving to the right is the one that's in the, on the left side, okay? So just by reading that and kind of thinking about it carefully, A is on the left. It has a mass of four kilograms, and it's moving to the right with nine meters per second. B has a mass of six kilograms, and it moves to the left, since they're going towards each other with six. Now, first things first here, velocities are vectors. They're going in opposite direction. They have to have opposite signs. So this one's going to the right. I'm going to make it positive. So this has to be negative. And obviously, these are meters per second, meters per second. Calculate the total momentum of the system. We're just going to use this right here. So P system is M1 V1 plus M2 V2. That's it. So what I like to do is I look at the masses 4 and 6, and I just do this, 4, parentheses, 6, parentheses. And then I slow down, I try to figure out what number goes here and what number goes here. So this is the velocity of the 4, the velocity of the 4 is plus 9, and this is the velocity of the 6, which is minus 6. When you do this, you have 36 plus negative 36, which is 0. 0 kilograms meters per second. Now, I did this on purpose just to make the point that just because you have two objects moving, it doesn't mean that their collective momenta is a, a non-zero number. If the momentum of this guy is 10 and this guy is 10, they add up to zero, okay? So just in case you see something like this, you're not weirded out. This is perfectly fine. Um, let me do another quick example here, and then we'll keep going. So here it says, calculate the momentum of the system below if objects have mass 2 kilograms. So the objects are both 2 kilograms. Now, I want to remind you that momentum is a vector. P is a vector because V is a vector. So when I combine the momentum of these two guys, uh, let's call this M1. Let's call this M2. When I combine the momentum of these guys and I say P total or P system is P1 plus P2, this is not enough. This only works for one dimension. But because these guys are going two dimensions, um, the momentum can't be simply the addition. Okay? Let me calculate the momentum real quick. Momentum is P equals MV. This guy has a mass of 2 and a velocity of 10. So I can write that P1 is 2 times 10, 20. So let me, let me put that in here. Uh, P1 is 20. This mass is also 2. This velocity is 5. So P2 equals 10. That's the momentum of each of them. Now, the sum of all momenta is not going to be 10 plus 20. That only works if they're pointing in the same direction. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to use vector addition to do this. And the way that this works is that the total, the final answer, P system, will actually be 
um, will actually be a vector at an angle as well. This is just vector addition, simple vector addition. So to find the magnitude of a vector at an angle, we're always going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So it's going to be px squared plus py squared. So what you're really doing, first of all, is finding the total px and the total py. Okay? And since p system on a vector level is p1 plus p2, then all you do is you do px equals p1x plus p2x and py equals p1y plus p2y. So I'm going to have to find the four individual components um, of 1 and 2. Once I have that, I'm going to add them up and find my total px and my total py, and those numbers will then go here. Okay? So to find these four guys here, 1, 2, 3, 4, I can just decompose here. Okay? I want to remind you that px is simply p cosine of theta, and py is simply p sine of theta. Now this works as long as the angle is against the x-axis, right? So this is a quick, a quick reminder of how vectors work. This angle is against the x-axis, but this angle here is against the y-axis. So instead of using that angle, I'm going to use a new angle here. Let me make it green. And I'm going to use 53. And that's because 90 minus 37, which is this angle right here, equals 53. I have to get the complementary angle. All right, so let's decompose this. I don't have tons of space here um, for the decomposition. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tell you what these numbers end up being, but you got to do this in the calculator yourself, right? So if I decompose this, it's going to look like this. This is going to be P2 in the y-axis, and this is P2 in the x-axis. Now, P2 in the y-axis is going to be 5 sine of 37 on the y-axis is sine. Okay, so 5 sine of 37 is 3. Actually, I'm so sorry, it's P, so it's 10 sine of, let me just do one of these, let me just do one of these. Um, I'm going to write P2Y is P2 sine of theta 2, so it's 10 sine of 37, which is 6. So this is actually 6 right here. Now, this is going to be 10 cosine of 37, 10 cosine of 37, which is 8. Now, this is going to the left, so it's negative 8. I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, maybe you might want to pause the video and try to do this yourself as well. See if you get these, the vector decomposition here. So, we're looking for P1x and all the way up over here, P1y. So this is the P, right? I want the P and not the V. P1x is 20, cosine of 53, which is 12, positive 12. Uh, P1y is 20, sine of 53, which is positive 16. Now that I have all the four components, I'm ready to plug them in here. So P1x is positive 12. P2x is negative 8. This adds up to 4. And the y's are 6 and 16. So 16 is the first one, and 6 is the other. This gives you 22. Once you know this, once you know the px total and the py total, you can actually draw this out. And it kind of looks like this. In the x-axis, it's a 4, so px is a 4. On the y-axis, it is a 22, so that's what it looks like. And this is your total P right here, which is what we want. If you see, it forms a little triangle, which is why we're able to use the Pythagorean theorem. So P is going to be the square root of 4 squared plus 22 squared. And the final answer is 22.4 kilograms meters per second. Cool? So let me just separate that over there. And that's how you would add momentum. So it's a very straightforward problem. It's just kind of annoying because you have to decompose all this stuff. But this is essentially a vector problem. Cool? Um,
that's it for this one. Let's go on to the next part.